what's up everybody? Happy New Year's to you all. Uh, so storm just passed. Uh, I'm on vacation for the next few days at least. Uh, so I'm having a great time doing some gardening and some work at home. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I make compost at home after a rainstorm. So we're gonna take all these wonderful gifts, I guess you can call them, that we've been given. I've, I've a lot of trees in the area uh, around uh, in my backyard. And so they've been getting broken branches. And you're, you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you a close up of what I, what I do at home and not just the stuff in the trees, but everything. So it's really easy to make compost. Compost is a great way to build up your soil and to have success out in the garden. And for those of you who already compost at home or you're using compost in your garden, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, it's one of those things where you can never really have enough of it. Each year, um, I add some, uh, some compost to my, to my garden, to my plants. And so each year I like to make it at home. As you probably know, soil is getting very expensive. Uh, it's just, everything is getting very expensive, I guess. And so the soil is one of those things where um, you can go purchase it. And there's tons of wonderful soils, potting mixes, planting mixes out there that you can maybe hopefully get your hands on, but not everybody can get their hands on really good soil to buy. And some people want to see their save some money uh, and, and actually utilize some of the materials that they can find near them to make some really good soil. I'm gonna show you just how to do that right now. So let's take a look. Well, I have a lot of oak trees in my backyard and a few sequoias, a couple of, uh, couple of Quirkus and a couple of sequoias, a couple of redwoods. And so you can see this, the storm has come through. We had some wind, we had a lot of rain and actually another storm is on the way. And so I just wanna show you kind of the aftermath. And uh, luckily I actually just cleaned up before the storm. A lot of this uh, lawn was covered in fallen leaves uh, that the trees have now put down because it's that time of year. And thankfully, all the leaves are pretty much out of the trees, but you can see the lawn needs to be scraped and raked and cleaned again. Um, but what really happened is we had a, I have a creek in my backyard and so the water actually flowed up to this cement right here. So it was actually on above uh, these bricks. And so we had tons of water. You can kind of see um, the aftermath of that. And so I have a lot of material in here that got broken loose out of the trees in the area and we're flowing down so i'm gonna get my gloves on and some rakes and uh i'll get out here and i'm actually going to collect all this organic matter here uh and rake it up the best i can pull out any debris that doesn't belong any plastic or rocks but uh most of this was stuff that was just shaken free from my tree and uh, you can see how it's kind of flown through and it's even dislodged some of my deep my uh my gravel here a little bit thankfully um it didn't just completely dissolve but uh, I'm gonna scrape a lot of this material up because even though it looks like a mess and it looks like something you'd wanna put just directly in your green waste bin, if you have the space, I'm, t I'm telling you, it's, it's a great uh, thing to consider is adding in some of this material because guess what, friends, boom. This is what, this is what it's all about. It all comes down to uh, making some compost. And so I'm gonna show you here basically how I like to make it. And so today I, I hope you can bear with me in that I don't have my tripod. And so I, I might have to just show you in a first person view of what's going on here. So uh, this is where I've been adding to my pile most recently. So you can see, like I said, uh, I've been raking a lot of this material out of my lawn. Um, a lot of oak leaves and you can see the redwood leaves in there as well. Can you tell which ones are which? Right? Yeah. So the oak leaves, a lot of those ones right there near my thumb. And then this, the redwood leaves are right there. And so of course, of course. Um, but uh, one is there evergreen. One is deciduous, right? The Quercus, the, uh, the, uh, what is that? Uh, the Quercus, uh, our oak trees, are um, completely deciduous. So they drop all their leaves. The redwoods just drop them throughout the year. So in my yard, long story short, is I had there's there's a never ending supply, um, either seasonally or even evenly throughout the year. I'm always getting some debris in my yard, and a lot of folks are raking that up and sending it away. But what I like to do is keep it. And so this is a pile I have at home, and you can see I've been adding some of some um, kitchen scraps. Um, even this, look at this, this wet uh, these eggshells. I got in here uh, and even the cardboard. That's why I always love buying varieties um, that at least use that material because then I can just get it soaked and feed it to the, uh, the microbes essentially. Um, but yeah, I got this wonderful pile here. So I've been adding lawn waste, kitchen scraps, eggshells, coffee grounds, all that, all the usual stuff. Even here, here's a house plant that I just put outside. This wasn't fond of it. I have so many of these plants and this one just, uh, I was gonna repot something fresh in its container. So I actually, I'm um, sorry, but he, he, he was taken care of. And so even fresh material will get added in. I wanted to show you right here. Um, I've been going around like, I, uh, you saw the aftermath at my yard. So I've been collecting all these old oak branches. They have a lot of lichen and different moss and stuff, stuff on them, but I've been breaking them. And so we're gonna chop them up, get a little pile. And so when you uh, have a compost pile, it's a mixture of your green material, your brown material, some moisture. 
Um, of course, we have tons of rain. And so before those rains came, I noticed my pile was actually relatively dry. And so um, before those rains, I actually kind of flattened the top off a little bit and, and created a little bit of a cone, um, almost like a, like a cinder cone on top. And I'm actually probably gonna even widen it and deepen it today because the storms are coming in um, again. And so I want this pile to actually soak up a lot of those rains because what's, what you can notice is um, these piles, the, the microbes, they just really, f they really feed off that moisture as well as of course the, the food you add in there. But if it gets too dry, I've noticed that my pile kind of slows down, the temperature drops and just the, the, the rate of decomposition kind of um, just slows down dramatically. And that's what we want. We want fast decomp. And so with the rains coming in, we're trying to capture that moisture with a flat, little flat top there, maybe a convex, or instead of having a convex cone top, you want a concave, something that kind of goes into the pile. And if it's to show you like that, literally pulling the pile out and making it like a pit. And there you go. And so you have a pit and I'll like, I'll use my, I'll get my tools out here, but that's essentially that way it'll actually capture some of that rain because especially the, uh, the one I've had to have at the school is uh, much larger than this pile. And it's, it just got so dry. I noticed that it just wasn't, things weren't breaking down at the rate I wanted. So uh, that's really it. I'm really, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna collect all that fallen material, even broken branches, because they're pretty already, um, they, the, the tree thinned itself out a little bit. So a lot of these branches are already in some kind of st state of decay. Like look at this one right here. Um, it's already kind of just decaying and it's super brittle and adding this to the pile, chopping it up, burying it is kind of where it's at. Um, everything I put in there, I try to clip and chop. Uh, this, these are all fresh and so I haven't, I haven't finished, but uh, if you can break it apart, chop it up. It's a good little workout if you, if you are, are up for some exercise, it can be a great use of your time because you're, you're building your soil. And here I wanna show you. So this is all the front of the pile. So you can see a lot of this material just piling up, piling up, piling up. And uh, this is all the fresh stuff, lawn clippings and whatnot. And uh, that's all, I just added that in the last few weeks. But here, come take a look at the back. And so this is our, the back of my pile. And so this has been here for maybe now brewing up for a few years where I, I come in here and use, use what I, I need. But um, I have never, I, I've added some potting soil to here as I kind of recycle it sometimes, but not much. You can see some of the perlite in there, but really this is all from what the front of that pile will turn into this. Just a nice broken down, and, and if you see material in there that's just too long for you and you didn't like that, when I when I do is I'll actually sift this, and I think I have that in other videos. So maybe I'll make a whole video just on sifting, but it's, it sounds exactly like what it is. You're basically sifting it out to take away some of the bigger material, give it more time in the pile, and when you get down to the finished you know, material, you're just gonna have a nice, even, textured, crumbly, breadcrumb-like, earthy, just, full of humic acid and nutrients and organic matter. That's what you want, that, that compost and just biologically alive. That one handful I, there I had right there probably has more microbes in it than all of the humans on the planet. So uh, good soil is, is living soil and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build our soil, feed our soil. And the best way to do it is to build compost. And one of the best ways to build compost uh, is to do it with material you can find nearby. So anywhere that you're nearby or if you have friends or family that have you know, leaves, organic matter, uh, these sticks and twigs, lawn clippings. If you have the space, just pile it up, get it wet, mix it up from time to time. And before you know it, for what, you, uh, what all that waste turns into is just some garden gold. And I'm telling you, look at that. And so actually it's been raining. Look at that. So this is exactly what I talked about, how, how dry the pile is. It's been raining like nonstop here in Sacramento for like the last week. And it's going to rain some more, but look, it's actually dry right here. This is right, it's just a few inches down and it's actually dry. So that water really didn't penetrate all that well because it's just sheeting off the top a little bit in some areas. And so that's a great example of what I'm talking about is so if, um, if you, especially if you live in a, like a drier climate, like where I'm at, in the summer it gets so hot and so dry, this pile just gets baked out. Even with it being in partial shade, it's, um, it just gets cooked in a way uh, from the outside in, just from the dry, to the dry heat. So. If you, what I'll do is I'll come out here and I'm literally gonna make this pit way bigger and kind of fatten the mouth and the peak, the top of this, and we'll go from there. But you can see, look at that. Oh, there's my, there's my Christmas tree. That one's gonna get, have to get chopped up and thrown in the pile too, but I'll do that. I'll do that later. But uh, until then, garden friends, happy gardening to you all. I hope you have a great year in your gardens. Hope your garden goals and dreams are realized. Uh, and I would just recommend just uh, learning all that you can from as many different sources as you can 
to make those dreams become a reality because I, I, I truly believe if you, if, you, if you want something bad enough and you work towards it, you can absolutely have a great shot at making that happen. So uh, until next time, garden friends, happy gardening to you all and never stop composting. Woo, let's do it.